So about a month ago, I made a change and it killed my productivity. So let's rewind. I listen to the Tim Ferriss podcast pretty often and he interviewed the founder of WordPress and Automatic, uh, Matt Mullenweg. So they talked about a lot of stuff in that episode and I found it very interesting, really enlightening to you know get some background on WordPress. Now, one of the things that Matt mentioned in the episode is the Dvorak or Dvorak uh, keyboard. I'd never heard of it before. He talked about it some, and basically it's a different layout for the keyboard as opposed to a QWERTY. It is more efficient uh, in that the letters are, the most common letters rather, are placed in the home position. So in general, you end up moving your fingers less to do the same sort of typing. So after I took a look at the keyboard, I must have felt like I had you know, plenty of free time or something. I thought, hey, I'm gonna try and switch over to Dvorak also. I did some research and it turns out that it's really easy to change any computer, uh, Windows or Mac, over to the other keyboard. Um, you just have to change the mapping Typically you go to uh, some sort of international keyboard um, section and you can just change it over immediately. So it takes like two seconds. The problem is I went from typing about 50 words a minute, which is not very fast, but it's good enough for you know, typically what I'm trying to do. I went from typing about 50 words a minute on average to about, I don't know, 10 words a minute or so uh, that first week. and. I've been practicing a lot for about a month and it's turned out to, um, you know, still be slow going. So right now, after about four or five weeks, I am typing about 30 to 35 words a minute and it's coming more natural um, at this point and I could think and, and type, but man, it's still pretty tough. So one of the main drivers to move over to the Dvorak keyboard is hopefully it'll be less wear and tear on my fingers and hands over the years. Some studies claim it's like 70-75% less movement to type the, you know, the same letters and the same words. One of the key things that helped is um, I got my wife involved and she is also you know, studying the keyboard, uh, the Dvorak keyboard and looking to move over. So. I thought it would be, you know, a little difficult to persuade her to do that, but she actually has had some issues with her hands, uh, you know, excessive typing and repetitive use uh, type injuries where the, she's had inflammation in her hands and fingers. It wasn't too hard when she heard that she may be able to type with less movement and, you know, overall help her you know, fingers and hands. Uh, she was willing to give it a shot. So that's how I messed up my productivity and uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to type faster coming up, but I, I kind of moved over a cold turkey. I only had uh, maybe two or three days of, of uh, basically you know, going back to a US, a regular US keyboard. So I, I did uh, regress a little bit, but at this point, since I've moved over to Dvorak, like 99% of the time, um, if I try and go back to a US keyboard, I actually type slow there too, so so I may as well just stick with it. All right, we'll check out the links below for uh, Dvorak, and you know, if you do switch over, it's kind of like learning a, a foreign language. Everything will be a little bit different. It's very frustrating, and you just have to keep making the effort each day um, in order to actually move it over. So, all right, thanks for checking out the video and uh, we'll see you next time. The rain's really picking up now, so hopefully that's not too loud. Where are you going, buddy? Hey, we gotta stay in here? Yeah, yeah, pretty safe.